Esther chapter 7. A reference to Galatians 6 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. What sober man soweth that he shall also reap? That's going to be Haman's lesson. So the king and Haman came to the banquet which, with Esther the queen. And the king said again unto Esther the second time at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? He knows there's something more than just having dinner. And the wisdom of Esther is, I'm not just going to drop the bond. I mean, she could have done that when she went in there, touched the scepter and say, Oh, king, do what we're going to do in chapter 7 and chapter 8. But she knows the naughtiness and the pride of Haman and playing him out. Again, God is not in, the, in, the, in this book, but he, God is playing out in the book. God is playing out Naaman's pride. I got to go with the king and queen, have a meal with them, and I'm going back tomorrow. There's no one else but me. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, look at that guy over there. He won't bow down before me. I'm going to build these gallows. Look how wonderful I am. King, you want you want to do somebody for something? That's got to be me. And I wonder if Mordecai was telling her how he acted whenever he was around her. Probably. Uh, and like I said, they didn't meet, but they met together. And she's a little dummy. Mordecai hanged out in the palace. He was there. He's the top leader besides the king himself. And she read the letter because the letter was given to her by Mordecai. And, come on, you know the Baptist Church. There's speculation words going around about everybody. She gets the word from everybody. She's working with higher-ups in the government. She knows his pride. And the Lord is using it if Esther's not using it. And the Bible speaks much about pride, and pride brings that brings you down. And that's what's going to happen here. I've dealt with people who have fought with alcoholism. They're saved, and they fought with it, and they fought with it, and some get victory over it. I have seen people with pride, and Honestly, I don't think they're ever going to, and I, I could be wrong. But pride lifts you up. How dare you speak to me? How dare you think that, that your authority, who are you? And Haman has dared to ask the king, the man, I want your clothes, I want your horse, I want your crown, I want to be proclaimed in your people. This is who the king delight. That's some nerve. That's because, oh, who did the king going to appreciate more? Myself. Okay, now this same man sitting down at dinner again, and there's only the king, the queen, and, and Haman, and the servants. And this is no dining room room. This is the palace. This is the best wine, the best cups, and everything. And the king goes through and says, you know, the banquet was thy petition, Queen Esther. It shall be granted to thee. What is thy request? It shall be performed even to the half of the kingdom. And that statement has been general of all the kings. I'll give you whatever you want, but I ain't going to give it all. It's a loophole. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, definitely found favor. She found favor in everybody. This is a bruise. Everybody loved Ruth. Find me anywhere in the Bible where somebody speaks ill of Ruth. <clears throat> David, they spoke ill of David. Solomon, they spoke ill of Solomon. Their sins. They even spoke ill of Jesus Christ. Lied about him. They had false witnesses that went again. But find me somebody who spoke ill with Ruth and Esther. If I found favor in thy sight, O king, that's her husband. She dresses him king. If it please the king, let my life. Now, you can imagine, he probably put the cup down, right? My life? What's wrong? What do you mean your life? Let my life be given me at my petition. Here's my petition. Here's my request. Here it is. 
and my people at my request. Remember, Mordecai has told Esther, don't tell anybody about who you are. Jewish, Hebrew, Israeli. Here it comes. For we are sold. Haman has put a price on the Jewish head. Silver. And that's back in... Uh... Chapter 3, verse number 9 and 11. There's a price tag on the Jewish heads. Anybody and everybody. There's going to be a price tag on the Jewish heads in the tribulation period. Okay. We are sold. I and my people. Okay, she's not of the same race of the king. My people. My people. What has that expression been through the whole Bible? The Jewish people. It's not American. It's not English. not Chinese. not Japanese. It's Israel. And if the king knows anything about the people that's in his land, the Israelites, as Felix knew before uh, Paul, the king may have already got it already, uh, Looking at her skin and looking at what she said, maybe he's already got the idea. Okay, now I know who you are. For I'm sold, I and my people, to be destroyed. Genocide. How? To be slain, killed, murdered, and to perish. John 3 16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in should not perish. King, we die, we're going to hell. That's laid out frank, true to the point before the king. Somebody's paying for us to die. And not just wound us to perish, to kill. Put us in the grave. My people. You know what, you know what that means to the king? His sweetheart, his wife, is in danger too. She's got his attention. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, all right, if they were put, well, people don't like this, but I'm going to say, if, <coughs> if people were put on this on the the market to be slaves, if my people are gathered up. That they could be sold for slaves anywhere and everywhere. Okay, I wouldn't say a word. But we're not talking about slavery here. We're not talking about servitude here, King. We're talking about death. God could take a servant, put him in another country. He's promised us people we will be back in our land. But if we go to die in Paris, we're not coming back. Especially if they die in their sins, but that's outside the story of the book. I had held my tongue. I wouldn't say a word. Although the enemy. Now we've already seen the enemy mentioned before. In look at chapter 3 verse 10. Esther knows something. By the Holy Spirit. Chapter 3 verse 10. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it to Haman the son of Amadiah. The Agonite. The Jews' enemy. Esther knows something. There is a Jewish enemy out there. It will be the Antichrist. There was Adolf Hitler. And there have been other nations. The United Nations is against Israel. The Muslims are against Israel. The Catholics are against Israel. But the enemy is Haman. The enemy has been Adolf Hitler. The enemy will be the Antichrist. The enemy. She knows something. And the Holy Spirit said, the word I want you to put there, inspiration, I want you to put enemy. Remember, this is by the Holy Spirit. This is not just man writing down what he thinks, as other men say the Bible is. It's not. Although the enemy could not countervail, that's the only time that word is used. And... He cannot act against with equal force or power. 
He has to go to you, King. Because if he started killing the Jews like he wanted to without the king's authority, he would be brought to trial and be a murderer. But if I do it under the, the wise and under the authority of the king, it's legal. I'll tell you, I'll tell you where that is today, worldwide. There's a law that says you can you can perform abortion that makes it legal and happen. But if you do it in, in a dark alley somewhere in the backwood uh, bedroom or kitchen, and do it, that, that's a crime. See, when the government does it, it's not a crime. The king's damage. Now, why is it the king's damage? What did we read in chapter 3, verse 10? The king gave him the ring and said, go and do it. Now, a betting is a, is a law phrase that you are in charge of the crime that happened. So, if you and your buddy are in the car, you're driving, you pull up to a gas station. And he says, listen, I gotta go get me some soda. You want a soda? I'll get you soda. Okay, some chips. Fine. And he goes in that store, and he robs that store, and he takes a gun and shoots that attendant. And gets the car, and you and him drive off. You are betting to that crime. Your action should be, I ain't going any further, I'm waiting for the cops here, I'm going to turn you in. The king gave his authority and gave his ring and gave Haman permission to do what needs to be done by Haman's order. And look how politely she does it. She charges nothing, but she goes in charging. She goes charging with wisdom. It's my baby. No, it's your baby. No, this is my baby. No, it's your baby. You hand me a sword. This is wisdom. This is wisdom. Then King Azahurus answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he? He doesn't even know what he's done. And yet he's still been charged by the Holy Spirit to Esther. And there are going to be many Christians and many lost people at the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment because they lack reading and studying their Bible. They're going to stand before and they're going to be found guilty of a crime. That, well, I didn't know I did that. And I believe the term in, in law is absence of the law. It, you know, I forget what the rest of it is. Just because you don't know, you could have known. King has a hearse to realize, you know, you want to go kill a genocide, a whole group of people? That should have turned the lights on right there. That's wrong. Anywhere and everywhere. A particular group of people you want to kill, that's wrong. So he said, who is he? And where is he? <laughs> he now, can you just imagine, he's sitting at that table and he's looking at Haman taking the drink. Who is he? Where is he? Right there. Right there. But he doesn't know. That Durst, that's the first time that word shows up, Durst, presume in his heart, there's the problem, get the heart is the problem, what Haman is thinking, to do so. It's never head, it's your heart. In the heart of Haman, the Holy Spirit has told us, he hates the Jew. A fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Atheism is of the heart. Salvation is of the heart. With the man, man believes unto righteousness from the heart. And Esther said, now you, you got to ask yourself before you read verse 6 on, does Haman know that she's talking about him? Or is he just so egoistic and so probably just sitting there, Oh, I'm having a great... He may, he may not even be listening. I don't know. But she's talking about him. She's got the two parties at the table right now. And they're rejoicing in drinking wine. And the Bible says, wine makes the heart merry. Cheereth man. Not this bitter cup. And Esther's not going to be found at fault for anything. She's doing everything properly, respectfully. She's not doing no name calling. Match this woman with Ruth. So the, uh, Esther said, 
the adversary, get that word, and enemy, and this wicked, get those words, adversity, enemy, and wicked. That's the description. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. 2 Thessalonians 2, 8. Adjectives in the Bible and verbs in the Bible and nouns are all important, but the description. 2 Thessalonians 2, 8. <clears throat> and then shall that capital W wicked. You ever seen King in your Bible with a capital K? That's Jesus Christ personified. Counselor is capital C. That's Jesus Christ. That capital W, w is the, the devil, the Satan. That's his name. Wicked. Be revealed whom the Lord shall consume out of the spirit of his mouth to destroy. Okay, that, I want you to see the wicked. A first second, first Thessalonians 2 8, and it's capitalized. You know, when you look at every wicked in the Bible, you're looking at somebody who's a type of, of the devil. And I have marked through my Bible, I have marked in places where it says, the wicked. I marked my Bible. And when it gets the wicked, I guarantee I have not checked all those references, but I guarantee those references are to the devil, to Satan, to the Antichrist. I guarantee it. Without studying them. So, Esther said, the adversary, who is he? The adversary. Where is he? The enemy is this. <laughs> what do you think she's doing? Pointy. Pointy. Wicked Haman. There he is. That's, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but he just met happen with that table at that moment. Gagging on, on a drink or, or something. Then Haman was afraid. Now that's not the devil. And that's not the Antichrist. They have no fear. A type does not go 100%. Satan does not fear God. And he does not fear the devil. He, he walks up to, to the gate. I and mean, walks up to God on the throne. And, and Job wanted to oh, let me at him. How dare you protect that man. Take your protection off him. And let me at him. You Jesus? Really? Take this bread. Take these stones and make them bread. Come on. Show me. Fall down and worship me, Jesus. People don't take that the devil is powerful and he's slick and he's an adversary. Is that not what the Bible says about the devil? An adversary. Your adversary is a lion seeking about who he may devour. Who's Haman trying to devour? The Jewish people. This wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. No one else there. Now, what is the attitude at this table now? And the king arising, that's the first time that word shows up, from the banquet of wine in his wrath went into the palace garden. This guy, he gets up. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, I, I'm going to assume here, this is something you don't have to believe. Okay, this is my own word. I have a feeling that he's not quick-tempered. But if he were to stay in that room, he's going to wrap his arms around his neck. I'm going, And this is the best thing to do, especially when you're dealing with children. Just go off another room, relax, think about it. Never chastise in anger. He goes walking off, he's like... Oh. And he's digesting, not the wine, not the... He's digesting everything the queen has told him. And he's probably thinking, okay, what are my aspects here? What am I to do? The king rises with the banquet of wine in his wrath, not anger, his wrath, went into the palace garden. And Haman stood up to make a request for his life to Esther, the queen. You mean you want to go and ask for your life for somebody you were going to kill? You just didn't know she was going to die. You didn't know she was one of the ones you hated. And had you carried out your plan, you would make the king angry because you would kill his queen. 
So the person you hate, the people you hate, you are going to them say, please save my life, please, please, oh, come on, queen, please have mercy on me, uncle, please. I don't want to die. He's not standing before the president and the queen of England. He knows he's going to die. He just doesn't know how and when. You don't deal with royalty back in the Old Testament times. Or the Roman and the Greek, Greek government. The Roman government, that guard that fell asleep in Acts 16, you know why he took a sword? Because if he would found out that his prisoners got out, they would have came and killed him and his family. He's like, I'll do it for myself. So he's pleading to the person or people that he wants to kill for he saw that there was evil determined he, wait a minute, is not wanting to kill an entire group of people genocide, is that not evil? The Holy Spirit has recorded that in the mind of Haman he wants to kill every Jew but for him to die, it, that's evil determined, what, he discharged Queen Esther with evil, got it? What she told the king, what the king's going to do to him, is evil determined. But, what I want to do to Jewish people, that was fine and dandy. I had reason. Esther has ruined his plans. Her evil determined against, against him by the king. He knows death is coming. That king just needs to calm down. So he's calmed down. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of one. Okay. And Haman was falling upon the bed wherein Esther was. Now this is not the bed you, know, you sleep in today. And the title of this video, the title of this audio, if you look at I have a picture of that bed. It's a, it's a lounge, I think they called it uh, uh, today. And it's, you got the flat, and it's it's angled where you put your, and they find that if you eat laying down with your with your body up, it's, it's better for the digestion, it's better for your body, it's healthier than what we do today, but they say today sitting in a chair ruins your back. It's unhealthy to eat that way. So the bed is the chair, it's a lounge, it's a type of couch. And he's probably not trying to force himself sexually. He's probably sitting at the edge of it. Oh, please, please, in my life, oh, please, please. But you know what he's done? He's got too close to the queen. And the king is already angry. So he's falling upon the bed wearing Esther was. He's probably on his knees or something, falling, wearing Esther was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in the house? King's got others. He's so angry. What are you doing to my wife? What are you trying to do? And he, the king's not even saying he's trying to plead for his wife. He's like, oh, really? He's thinking adultery. Him is so wicked that the king can't even think that he's pleading for his wife. Will he force the queen also before me in the house? As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. He's either going to be beheaded or any, what it would be is you're not looking at and you're not seeing nothing. You don't even have the right to look at the king and the queen. And they take a sack and they put it over your head. And a lot of times with the guillotine, when they put you in the cart, they would cover your head with a sack. Sometimes they covered your head when they were going to take off your head and they had your head open as you're going. But at some point in time, your head was put in a sack. The people who are standing in that banquet room knows the king is upset, knows the anger, and knows that, hey man, you're gone. That's it. Cover him. So the whole intention of the room is, woohoo! And Harba. One of the chamberlains said before the king, Now this guy's this guy is really, you know, he the king is angry. 
somebody's tried to, to, you know, force his wife, the queen. He's mad at Haman. This might be the good time to, to say anything. But watch what he says. Said before the king, Behold also the gallows, uh oh, the gallows, 75 feet plus or minus, 50 cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai. So I don't know if the king knew what was going on, but the servants knew it. I mean, 75 foot gallows. Two school buses end on end. You're going to see it. <laughs> Who has spoken good for the king? Now look at other words. Let's go back to chapter 6, verse 1 again. On that night could, could not the king sleep. We commanded to bring the book of the records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. It was found written that Mordecai had told a big, you know, the crime that these two men were going to lay hands. I wonder if this guy over here is the same guy that read those chronicles of the king. Is they king? If it's true, I don't know. Remember Mordecai that 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 helped you in the chronicles. Haman has the nerve to speak against him. Har bonus the chamber. He's added more fuel to the fire against Haman. Not only is he wants to kill all these people in the king's name, not only is he uh, abducted the, the queen, but now you dare speak about someone who saved the king's life? Mordecai, who has spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. It's in his house. Then the king said, hang him there. God, be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Haman built those gallows for a hanging, and Haman's going to hang on them. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared. You see that word prepared? That falls throughout Esther. There's another book in the Bible that it has an anxious word of prepare. It's called Jonah. Now what the correlation between the two is, I don't know, but they have prepared things. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Now the only other place pacified shows up is Ezekiel 16, 63. He prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's wrath was pacified. The king's finally said, okay, is he dead? He's dead. Wow, that's gone. That's done. No king. That is done, but it's not done yet. And we'll do that next few chapters, Lord willing.